what's up everybody true boxing here thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth so today doing the what's next on former two division world champion jose Pedraza following his fourth career defeat a 12 round unanimous decision loss to former unified champ jose ramirez these two guys met in a crossroads bout on friday march 4th and Ramirez just, you know, I mean, I thought Ramirez was going to stop Pedraza, and Pedraza was in the fight. He really was. He was boxing. He was doing his thing. It's just Ramirez was just doing more. He just got outworked is pretty much what it was. But he landed some solid shots, did his thing, and he just didn't have the power to keep Ramirez off of him. And, um, you know, he got outworked in the fight. But, you know, no shame in this one. It was probably the most, in my opinion, of all his defeats, this was probably the most competitive he was in defeat. So, you know, moving forward with his dream of becoming a three-division world champion, is that still going to happen? And you know what? I think Pedraza, it probably will because 140 looks like it's going to soon become wide open. You know, Josh Taylor's likely going to give up all four of his belts. He doesn't want to do a rematch with Caterell. Uh, he's been talking about moving up to, one, to 147. So, you know, very likely all those belts are going to become open. And even a veteran uh, like Pedraza is going to be, you know, still viewed as a contender. Now, and, and the, the thing is, is he kind of already is looked at as a gatekeeper. This is a guy that's been around. You know, he's a former two-division champ. He's solid, but he doesn't seem like too big of a threat for guys on the rise. So he might, you know, he might be an attractive selection for for opponents on their way up so he might not take a tune-up bout in his next fight uh next fight he might go straight out and take on another contender so let's quickly run through the top 10 and see what possibly could be you know could be options for the former two division champ Pedraza we start with the number one undisputed champion, Josh Taylor. Taylor's not going to be interested in that. Taylor wants to move to 147, most likely. Even if he stayed at 140, he likely would, wouldn't would fight Pedraza coming off of a loss. So that, no, that one's off the table. Number two is a rematch with the former unified champ, Jose Ramirez. Not going to happen. Ramirez beat him soundly. Ramirez is likely going to fight for a title next. Um, you know, granted, Josh Taylor moves up, so not seeing this one. Number three, Jose Zepeda, Zepeda which will be a rematch. Uh, Zepeda uh, defeated him a couple years back. Doesn't make sense. Zepeda's in line to fight for the for the WBC title next, so no, I absolutely don't see that one. Number four, Regis Progray. Progray is supposed to be returning soon, um, but I really don't think the promotion would work out on this one. And Progray is look, probably is still looking for bigger fights. You know, he barely stays active, let alone fighting you know guys of this level he either wants to fight low level guys or big names and that's what's been his going thing now again i think the promotion messes this fight up anyway so not likely um number five coming into this was victor postal but postal has lost to gary antoine russell so he's dropped but postal is heading back to his his native ukraine and gonna help defend what's going on um, with Russia out there, so not likely that he would be an option next, even though I like that option, both coming off of losses, why not? But I, I don't think it's going to happen. Um, number six, Sandor Martin. Martin is fighting um, on the zone on April 1st. He's going to be returning from the win against Mikey Garcia. And, um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised, but I don't know if Pedraza wants to make that fight. Plus, Pedraza working with top rank and Sandor Martin working with the zone. I'm not sure that fight can be made, so I'm going to lean towards no. Um, number seven, Mikey Garcia. Not seeing it just from the standpoint that Pedraza is with top rank and Mikey Garcia wants nothing to do with working with top rank. Um, again, Pedraza was number eight coming into this. You know, coming into the year, he was number eight. We got Robert Easter at number nine, the former lightweight champ. He's with the PBC, so not likely. And then number 10, Montana Love. He signed with Eddie Hearn and Matchroom, so not likely that that fight gets made. And then now we have Jack Catterall and um, Gary Antoine Russell, who are also in the top 10. Now, Catterall likely going to be put in line to fight for the vacant WBO title if Josh Taylor gives it up. So I don't see that one. And then... Um, 
Gary Ancho and Russell fights for the PBC. So Pedraza is not looking like there's going to be a lot of guys that are lining up to fight him next in the top 10. But maybe Pedraza wants to take another uh, undefeated fighter on the rise like he did when he fought Julian Rodriguez and dominated him uh, last year en route to getting into the position to fight Jose Ramirez. So he's going to have to start over again, but Pedraza is one of those fighters. He's a veteran. I think one last run for him probably makes sense. He gets the five losses, maybe hang him up, but he's still a threat in my opinion and still a contender. And I'm sure we're going to see him back um, later on this year trying to keep his name relevant and, and get back in the mix. But we'll see what happens. But that's what I got. That's my what's next on former two-division world champion Jose Pedraza following that tough unanimous decision loss to former unified champ Jose Ramirez. I hope you guys enjoyed it. True boxing.